Are aliens real? What are UFOs, aliens, demons, and what does the Bible actually have to say about it? Stick to the very end of this video. You'll be very happy that you did. You know, the Bible talks about in the last days of specific deception that will come upon the earth. If you read in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, the Bible said there are specific signs and agendas that will be implemented by the Antichrist in the last days. One of his primary functions in the last days will be major deception on the earth. In fact, the deception will be so great and the people will actually fall so deep into this deception that the Bible says God will even allow people to be deceived because they've chosen the deception. It'll be such blatant deception that they will actually have to make a physical conscious choice to be deceived. So much so that God will allow them to, to fall into that trap the same way he did with Sodom and Gomorrah. The people living in Sodom and Gomorrah, they chose to live in Sodom and Gomorrah. When Lot was being delivered out of Sodom and Gomorrah by literal angels, even his wife looked back at Sodom and Gomorrah because she chose sin. She chose that life in her heart. It will be like that in the last days. Now, what does that have to do with UFOs and aliens and demons in Bible prophecy? Well, this is what it has to do with it. Part of the agenda of the Antichrist system in the last days to deceive you is to get you to fall under a one world order with a one world money system, with a one world military, with a one world religion, and eventually a one world ruler known as the Antichrist. One of the primary ways that the Antichrist agenda will be implemented will be through deception. And one of those deceptions will be the existence of aliens and the sightings of UFOs. Now, here is something I want to be abundantly clear on. Are aliens real? No. Are demons real? Yes. Are some demons like aliens? Yes. In this sense, I'll tell you what I'm talking about. In Genesis chapter 6, the Bible actually tells us as one of the most ancient documented historical context pertaining to this topic says in Genesis 6 that there were certain angels that were called watchers in the heavens and they saw mankind in the earth. In fact, they saw the women of men in the earth and they thought that they were beautiful. So angels actually came down, the Bible calls them the sons of God. In the Hebrew it is Elohim, meaning angels, angelic beings, the sons of God, the angelic beings of God. They came down and it says that they mated with women. So they took women to be their wives and they created demigods. Think about all the Greek mythology and all the stories you hear about Achilles, the mighty warrior, Hercules slaying the nine headed dragon and all of these uh, insane demigod type stories that you grew up listening to. Even look at modern day media. Think about all these movies that are coming out uh, recently talking about demigods in the earth. What happened was fallen angels came in to the, the daughters of men and they birthed demigods or Nephilim and giants. The Bible says there were giants in those days afterwards. So when they created hybrids or crossbreeds, they birthed Nephilim, half angel, half man, an abomination to God, but a supernatural and natural being. Same thing with the giants. And the same way that those fallen angels came down and corrupted humanity in Genesis chapter 6, which later led to Genesis chapter 8, where God wiped out the entire planet with the flood, it says that all of men's thoughts and ways were evil. So God had to wipe out humanity. He had to wipe out the giants, wipe out the Nephilim. It says he wiped out even the smallest creeping bug on the planet. He had to wipe out everything except for Noah and his family and the animals that he sent to the ark. The same way that fallen angels came down to deceive man in Genesis chapter 6 is the same way they are reappearing today. They are attempting to come one last time because they know that Jesus' return is very, very soon. And what is happening, and some, you can call them conspiracy theorists, whatever you want. Somebody once said the difference between a conspiracy and the truth is about six months. But many people that would be deemed conspiracy theorists say that these types of people, these types of fallen angels, these types of entities are st still dwelling among humanity today. They've been incognito. Some people say they live under the earth. Some people say they live in the stars. Many people say many different things. What we do know 
is that they are real and they are existent. Now, they're not from another planet, but they are from another dimension. They are from, uh, they are interdimensional beings. They are spiritual beings that have the capacity to travel interdimensionally. The Bible makes that abundantly clear because they came out of the heavens and they came into the earth and they mated with the daughters of men. This is what I believe is going to be one of the greatest deceptions in the last days to get people that are not paying full attention or they don't know what the Bible says to fall into the devil's deception. This is what I believe is going to happen. The Bible makes it abundantly clear that when Jesus comes back to rapture us out of the earth, that 50% of the church will be raptured. Newsflash. Not everybody that believes in Jesus is going up in the rapture. The Bible actually says there will be two working in a field. One will be taken, one will be left. There will be two laying in a bed. One will be taken, one will be left. There will be two working a mill. One will be taken, one will be left. There will be two at a cash register. One will be taken, one will be left. There will be two people standing in an altar to get married. One will be taken and one will be left. There is coming a day when Jesus will rapture us out of the earth, the righteous, ready church of God, the not the denomination of the church of God, but the righteous, ready bride of Christ. The Christians that are actually living on fire for God, they're living holy, they're sold out, they're all in they're not lukewarm because jesus said in revelation chapter 3 those that are lukewarm he will spit them out of his mouth well where must they have been originally for them to get spit out they must have been in christ at one time they were in his mouth and he would spit them out if they were lukewarm but i believe because you're watching this video right now you will not be among those that are spit out you will not be among those that are left here when the rapture takes place you will not be among those that are numbered the lukewarm in the last day Days. No, I believe you're watching this video for a purpose and for a reason. You will be one of the righteous ready. You will be a Christian, a man or a woman that is on fire for God in these last days. You will do the will of God in these last days. God will anoint you and he has appointed you to be a light beacon in this generation. And there will be nothing on the face of this earth that can hold you back from doing the will of God. That's what I believe. I believe God has anointed you for such a time as this. But here comes the great deception. Just like the parable of the ten virgins. I believe it's in Matthew 25. All ten of them were virgins. All ten of them have kept themselves pure. But only five were ready for the coming of the Master. It says only five kept their oil trimmed, kept their lamps burning. The other five did not have enough oil to keep their lamps burning. So when the Master came, he told them, Depart from me. I did not know you. Whereas the other five that were ready for his return went with him. So that's five and five. That's 50%, according to that parable, 50% of the body of Christ will not go up in the rapture. So this is what I believe is going to happen. When the rapture takes place, I believe the devil is going to capitalize on it. The Antichrist is going to make a massive delusion and illusion happen all around the world, where they're going to say it was aliens that abducted people out of the earth, and ironically, it's just going to happen to be the Christians. So I believe one of the greatest deceptions we're going to see in these last days is the same way that they're sprinkle, sprinkling aliens into the news, and they're telling people, we found aliens, we have UFOs, we have all this stuff going on. I'm sure they do, but they are not who they are telling you that they are. They're not just aliens from another planet. They are demons from another realm. They are fallen angels that have one goal and one objective, which is to slaughter mankind. But those of you that are living ready, those of you that are paying attention to these last days, no matter what the great illusion and delusion is in the world, you will not be deceived. It doesn't matter how great of a hologram or whatever projection they put into the sky to make it look like an alien abduction is happening. I believe you'll be numbered among those saints that go up in the rapture when Jesus comes to take us back. So what's the truth about UFOs and aliens and demons in the Bible? Well, the reality is everything that the news tells you is probably a lie, but everything that is in God's word is most definitely true. We know that these things have existed before. We know that they have shown up from time to time. And we know most importantly that Jesus is coming back very, very soon. Live ready, be ready, and don't be deceived by what's happening in the world. Thanks for watching. If you like this type of content, give it a thumbs up, share it with somebody, and go watch the next video. It'll bless you. I'll see you there.